The word of the week is ionios. It's an adjective meaning eternal. What makes this word interesting is that the meaning changes based on the subject that the adjective is applied to. Sometimes the context will also change the meaning. We're going to look at four or five different usage, usages of it today and see how it varies throughout. The first two and a half usages are in Romans chapter 16 verses 25 through 27. We'll take each verse one at a time and see how it's used differently. All three of these are from the ESV with the Koine supplied. Uh, verse 25, now to him who is able to strengthen you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery that was kept secret for long ages, dot, dot, dot. And for long ages here is uh, chronois ionios. And that's literally for times eternal. It's a long time with a beginning and an end. How do I know it has an end? Because verse 26 begins with the words, but now has been disclosed. So that which was kept secret for a long period of time, times eternal, has now been disclosed. So here in the first usage, the period of time is a long period of time that has a distinct beginning and a distinct end, both of which happen prior to our reading. So it's a long period in the past, yet the term eternal is used to describe it uh, for times eternal. Let's move on to 26. But has now been disclosed and through the prophetic writings has been made known to all nations according to the command of the eternal God uh, to bring about the obedience of, of faith. And the term uh, of the eternal God is to Ioniu Theu, uh, the eternal God, God outside of time, God without beginning and without end. And interestingly, every time this word Ionios is applied to God, um, it has that timeless meaning, eternal in the sense of being apart from time, outside of time. Unlike the period described in verse 25 that had a distinct beginning and an end, uh, God, when Ionios is applied to the word God in the New Testament, it never has that sense of a beginning and an end or an end. Um, let's carry on to verse 27, and it, where it says, To the only wise God be glory forevermore, through Jesus Christ, amen. And glory forevermore, uh, ace tus ionos, unto the ages. This word is not ionios, it's from the same root though, ion. And this is, so this is unto the ages. It has that same root and here it means forevermore, unto the ages. How many ages? He doesn't say. All the ages, a rash of ages, we're going to take it uh, unqualified, unto the ages, forevermore. Um, so we see in the two and a half times that we've had this word used um, in, in this passage, when it's applied to God, it's unqualified, without beginning or end, timeless. The other two give us a finite time in the past, and then the last gives us an unending time um, that uh, with an unqualified start. Uh, we know it's a period of time. We don't know exactly when it begins and we know that it doesn't have a described ending. Uh, the next one we're going to look at is in 2 Corinthians 4 verses 17 and 18. And what we're going to see is um, a slightly different usage to make the same point. Uh, let's dive in. For this light momentary affliction is preparing for us an eternal weight of glory <clears throat> beyond all comparison, as we look not to the things that are seen, but to the things that are unseen. For the things that are seen are transient, but the things that are unseen are eternal. So eternal is used twice here in these two verses. In verse 17, we get Ionion Baros. What's being compared here? He says, there's a light momentary affliction. So there's something temporary and it's affliction, a negative thing. But the good news is it's light compared to this other thing. 
This other thing is going to be heavy. Usually when we think of light and heavy, we don't think of light as the negative and heavy as the good, but that's what's happening here. Why is the good thing heavy? Because the good thing is glory. So your affliction is temporary and light, but the glory that's coming is weighty and it is eternal. Uh, Ionios baros. It's an eternal weight of glory. Um, then he goes on to say in verse 18 that the things that are seen, this light transitory affliction, uh, that's just temporary. That doesn't last. But the unseen thing, the weighty glory to come, is eternal. Um, so how does he describe that? He says the things that are unseen are Ionia, eternal, forever. What's the qualification of the time? What's the beginning? What's the end? He doesn't tell us. Uh, so it's a different use, but notice how he uses it to uh, establish a comparison, right? The light, temporary, momentary affliction versus the weighty and eternal glory to come. Uh, next, we're going to see it used describing something eschatological pertaining to the end times. And this is in 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 11. For in this way, there will be richly provided for you an entrance into the eternal kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The eternal kingdom, uh, tain Ionion Basileon. So what, is, what kind of kingdom is this? This is the kind of kingdom that's going to last forever. Um, what's its beginning point? He doesn't tell us. Uh, does it have an end point? It certainly doesn't sound like it. But what matters here is our access to it. He says, you will be, you will be in the future provided an entrance into a kingdom that doesn't end. The kingdom that you're currently living in will end. Uh, but the kingdom that you will have an, access, have an entrance into uh, is an eternal kingdom, a kingdom that goes on and on forever. Um, the last thing we're going to see is sort of a weakened use of Ionios that turns it into a synonym of the word always. Okay, uh, this is in uh, uh, Philemon. It's in verse 15, and it says, For this perhaps is why I was parted from you for a while, that you might have him back forever. Um, so back forever, uh, Ionion, forever, just like uh, it was eternal in the previous verse. Here we translate it forever. Uh, why? Because we're talking about uh, Philemon, the runaway serv bond servant. Paul says he's going to be returned to you. It's good that he was away from you for a while because when he's returned from to you, it won't just be as a bond servant in verse 16, he says, uh, but also as a brother because now you're both in Christ. And yes, he is technically still a bond servant. And yes, he is going to be returning to you, but it'll be as more than that. Um, will it be forever? Well, you can't forever be a bond servant because what we know is both men at one point, we don't know who will go first, but both men will die and uh, slavery terminates with death, right? So that in that sense, they won't be together uh, always or forever. Um, and uh, in a temporal sense, they won't be together always and forever. But the nature of their changed relationship, where they go from servant master to brethren, um, does have a forever context, doesn't it? So it changes from that, uh, will it be eternal? In a sense, but I don't think that's what Paul is saying here in Philemon. I think what he's saying is that the nature of your relationship has changed to go from this earthly slave master relationship to this forever brotherhood. Your brother is your brother forever, right? Um, so the change in the relationship is what's being emphasized. Ionios is a simple word that has a complex meaning that changes based on the subject to which the adjective is being applied and on the context. If you want to have some fun, pull out your concordance or pull out your computer and um, take a look at all the verses in the New Testament that use the word eternal or forever or forevermore and look to see it, that it's that word ionios. 
and see how the, um, the time frame is either defined or undefined. See where it begins and or ends. See if it has a beginning or an end. And you'll be amazed by the richness of the variety of the uses of this uh, simple sounding word, Ionios, eternal, and its complex uses. That's what makes it the word of the week, that interesting, uh, vast scope of its use. Until next time, Kars uh, Kairani Humine, grace and peace to you.